Welcome to uh, the mini the micro engine build. This will be episode 13. Uh, really on the home straight now. This episode is really focused on the engine stripped down, clean, and preparation for getting the head rebuilt. Uh, whilst I'm waiting parts to arrive for the rest of the build. Um, the last part of the video is a quick uh, tour on the garage, just showing you how I make the most of the space I've got in here. So enjoy the video. I'll catch up later. Now, one of the things uh, you'll need to do if you plan to use the old valves in your engine uh, is to give them a good clean. As you can see, this exhaust valve here is quite coked uh, at the valve stem itself. The valve itself is in good condition. The stem's got no detectable wear at all. And I can get the valve, I'll show you the technique in a sec, to get the valve from that sort of uh, condition in terms of its uh, cleansiness to that sort of condition um, within a few minutes. And then what I do is put a little bit of masking tape at the start of the vent, uh, valve stem itself. Because what I don't want to do is abrade the valve stem. Okay, there's a close-up of the valve, a uh, polished head. And, uh, yeah. Looks like new again. One thing I just mentioned earlier, the the seat I've not touched with any uh, rubbing paper, it's just been purely polished. Okay, now I've got the, um, the valves all uh, cleaned, uh, all decarbonised, and the head generally cleaned. I'll show you the, the valve itself, I'll just bring that close into the camera. Uh, what I aimed to do was get the valve seat uh, polished so it's nice and shiny, and that really helps with lapping in the valves. So the aim is, is to just lap these valves in just to get a fine matte grey right across the contact area between the seat and the valve. Uh, if I just get another valve, which I've already done, um, just give that a bit of a clean, you should be able to see the difference. That's a, just a, a light grey on the edge there, just a matte finish. You compare it with this one here, hopefully, and I'll show how that well worked. Uh, shows on the camera, but uh, one's quite shiny, one's dull, that's what you want to aim for, all the way around. So, what I start off with, I start off with a bit of oil. It's a small amount of oil, which I put on the the valve stem itself. You're not going to wear, do any damage to your valve though. So that's the first step. And then the next step is just get some uh, grinding paste. And I use, because the valve seats in this particular head are, are very, very good, there's no real issue with them, and so are the valves. It's just really just a bit of final finishing, to be fair. So I'm using a fine paste just around the valve seat to just smear that on. And just have to drop that down quite well. Once you've got that established, the trick is then is just to move that to the palms of your hands and just grind away and then a trick then every so often is to lift the valve out turn it through 90 degrees drop it back into the seat and grind again so, so periodically take the valve out, give it a clean I use a bit of WD-40 to clean it examine it, again use a magnifying glass and if necessary put a bit more paste on and then continue the lapping process even the head's good, a good sort of five minutes per valve. And what I use, I'll just turn the camera around. I use a sort of fairly tried and tested system here. of a little bit of cardboard with holes in, with all the valves in order. So this is a poly end. So all eight inlets, all eight exhausts. I know everything goes back in the same place. One of the things I do towards the end of the process, I give the valve head just a quick squirt, literally just a, a squirt of WD-40. Put a bit of it too much on there, just to lubricate the um, grinding paste. A bit like the principle of using an oil stone to uh, reduce the friction slightly, and just to get a slightly better finish. So that is the finished product. Nice even grey finish. I've checked it with a magnifying glass, and I'm happy with that. So by doing this, you hopefully will get a really good seal between the valve and the valve seat. Uh, the other job I want to get done on the on the head is to get it skimmed. Uh, first of all, to improve the gasket surface because it has got some residue on, 
and then secondly to increase the compression. The One of the things I wanted to point out on this particular engine, at the bottom of where the valve spring sits, just in this little recess here, there's normally a little washer, uh, I've got one here, as you show that sits in that little recess and if you're doing any, or intend to do any machining work and transporting the head around, it's very very worthwhile getting these out. Some will come out easily, some not so, and what happens is that the underneath of it here will film of oil in here which holds this small washer in place you get a vacuum effect that just holds it tight um, so what I've done I've developed a little system using a, a paintbrush um, and some brake cleaning fluid uh, which is a very, very good at breaking the oil down and just washing this area out um, just keep repeating the process and eventually as you put the paintbrush in and turn it and keep turning it around just to wash that area you will feel the oil breaking down you'll feel or you'll start hearing a sort of metal to metal contact indicating that the oil film has been dissipated and once you've done that you can generally give it a little flick um, with a screwdriver or something turn the head over and it will drop out now, as you can see I've just uh, taken the sump off this engine and as you can see it's extremely dirty, I had an inkling as soon as I took the sun plug out and seen the state of the oil that came out things weren't going to look too pretty inside and lo and behold what I found here um, aligns with my initial thoughts so I'm just going to start stripping this down piece by piece getting it cleaned up ok I'm just um, in a part strip down here at the bottom end and I've just taken uh, the number one piston out and there's some it, whilst it's absolutely filthy inside here, it needs a really good clean, uh, there is some good news. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this make easily, but you can still see the machining marks on the piston skirt here. So there's no scoring, no indication of any wear at all. Um, the bad points are, because I think the oil's been neglected in this engine for quite some time, the uh, control ring here is quite gummed up. So the plan is to replace the rings irrespective. Uh, the pistons are salvageable, uh, all good and clean. Now, as you can see, the inside of the engine is absolutely filthy. Now, the timing cover was in the same state as this, quite dirty. And what I've used, I'll just get the camera over here. What I've used is a combination of um, degreaser just to get the initial grease off, and then brake and clutch cleaner, and then just carefully pulled out the silicon sealant in this uh, rebate here. And I've just added a little, couple of little labels on here just to remind me about the seals uh, on the block itself. It's such an easy thing to uh, forget as you're reassembling. Uh, just a bit of a tip on the face where the sump sealed onto. That had a good liberal coat of silicon. Um, rather than scraping, I just use this uh, silicon uh, remover. It's used for domestic use, but it worked really good. And then once it's um, done its job, it all sort of bubbles. Just use a plastic scraper, just scrape off the surfaces and they come up really good. I'll just get a close up of the oil control ring and just uh, contrast it against this cloth. Uh, as you can see that's totally gummed in all respects, so one very good reason for changing the rings. Um, pistons themselves, one thing I did want to point out is that just up behind the control ring there are four little uh, holes for an oil passage so just using, I'm just using a TP toothbrush just to make sure they're clean so I'm going to clean these pistons up um, using the detergent One is my clean piston, just needs a bit of finishing off. Well the engine's now fully stripped, uh, as you can see I've got all the components on the on the bench here, all freshly cleaned, painted where required. Uh, so now I've reached the point where I'm just waiting for some parts to arrive for the engine, I can get on with that. I was going to physically go and pick them up uh, in person, but of course with the lockdown that's not going to be possible, so I'm just making arrangements at the moment to get stuff delivered here 
uh, via mail order, so the whole raft of bits and pieces come to the ending quite soon. Um, I'd like to just end this video really just by just doing a quick gauge uh, tour. It's not about all the sort of tools I've got, it's not a tool tour or such, it's about really just organising your garage to make the best of the space you've got available really. And I'll just show you what I've done in this garage, just to make it as efficient as I um, can do really. So just the backdrop to this garage, I just started a standard double garage, uh, bare concrete floor, uh, plastic ceiling, bare walls, two sockets, literally one at the back, one at the side, and two pendant lights. It was particularly dark and it was dusty and it needed improving. So the first thing was to do was to decorate it all in white walls, ceiling, um, get the lighting sorted out. So I put five strip lights on the ceiling and a couple of wall lights just to get plenty of light into the cars and so on. And then I changed the uh, sockets from just two doubles to a multitude of doubles. I think there's about 26 to 30 sockets in here now, so you never more than just a few feet away from a socket. Uh, so they're all went right around the perimeter, and I've got about four at the top here in the centre of the gauge. We can drop cables down from here as well. So that was uh, that sorted, and the floor, which was a dusty sort of concrete, is now covered in latex, which is a very hard sort of um, cement, very very fine cement which goes super smooth, self-levels, and I've painted that a number of times. It needs doing again this summer. So, just here where the engines all, all the engine parts are stored at the moment, this is a very temporary situation I've got here. It's just a sort of standard workmate type um, bench with a sheet of chipboard clamped to it, and that will all be removed, leaving the gouge as clear as possible. That's the whole objective really I try and maintain, is keep a clear gouge floor. And then likewise around here, this is just on trestles on a board just for temporary storage. So as soon as the engine is built, that will be clear space up to the back wall. So here, where possible, I tend to keep my tools all on a board ready. It just provides easy access. You can easily see what's missing when you finish the job. And it keeps stuff off the floor and out the way. So it's quite an efficient way of doing things. And I've got a pillar drill here, a chest of, uh, small chest of drawers. So this corner, a uh, compressor. Down below here, 150 litre compressor, and again another, another tool board here. This is all shadow boarded. Now this is the workshop that joins the garage. Um, it's not a big space, but it's very useful in the sense it keeps the garage clear of a lot of clutter. Uh, and I've just again tried to maximise the use of the space. This is a bench I usually use for assembling bits working on. It's got a vice on. Underneath the storage here, generally sort of plumbing tools. Again, on the back here, it's generally sort of bricklaying tools, more woodwork and general purpose tools, and panel beating tools. And then round here, just a series of shelves. Um, I know it's a little bit dark on camera, but what I tend to do is just keep all the high frequency tools and things consumables at this end of the workshop as well, so they're easy to get to. And then the less frequently used tools at the back in, in a further storage area. One of the recent additions I've made to this particular workshop, this area here, which is used for my sort of general tool bag, that simply comes off, bolt comes out, that comes off, sits in there, and then a clamp, a clamp like that, a clamp on the other end, and it provides an extra piece of workspace just for laying tools on, moving on to the bench. So it's quite a useful little addition with a little backstop there. And then this corner of the workshop, just a standard sort of array of nuts and bolts, various fasteners, most are labelled up. Um, engine crane, again that's stored tight into the wall so it takes up as little space as possible. And then here just a sort of drill stand ready to get everything kept on the wall. Three drills, a couple of grinders, uh, different types of work. However, so again it keeps us, this is just dead space, I couldn't do much with it, it's just a useful store just to put stuff in. And again, to maximise every last inch, really, of what I can use, I put shelving here in the roof space, just to put uh, things like drill bits, crocodile clips, uh, rib nuts, hooks, and the list goes on and on all the way around, as it were. So I've got things that are used frequently, lightweight, and need at the bench quite regularly. So that's another thing labelled up where you can't guess what's in them. On this side of the garage, I just keep all my sort of rubbing papers here, wet and dry paper in great order. So you can just see at a glance, and you've always got the correct paper for the correct job, as it were. And the other thing on the door here, I just keep a, a list of things I need to purchase. So 
list of jobs on this side and lists of parts and tools which need purchasing essentially. So that's just my little ongoing shopping list which constantly gets updated. The other thing I use quite often in the garage, um, it's quite useful to use in the centre to be able to walk around a bench rather than have it tight up against the wall. Um, it's a great list for light duty jobs, um, just standard workmate, and then a piece of board, this is an old desktop, but anything old bit of kitchen worktop is fine. Uh, clamp it on with a couple of G clamps and you've got a reasonable size work workbench which you can clamp vices to and all the rest of it. And then the other thing I find quite useful if you're lacking in space is little uh, plinths such as this one. This has obviously got a, just a polisher grinder on with a block of wood underneath. Drop it to your workmate, tighten the jaws up and you've got a fairly sturdy um, bench grinder that you can use. And I've used this sort of principle for other tools as well. I think originally I had my pillar drill on a, on a stand like this. Well, hopefully that's been a useful quick tour of the garage, just showing you how I keep things uh, organised and so on. It's hopefully the most uh, efficient way I can do things in this particular garage, in terms of access to tools and components I need and general way I need to work and so on. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, please comment below if you've got any questions. And uh, as soon as the next uh, delivery comes in of engine parts, I can then move on to the next phase. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.